So good morning, October the 21st, 2014. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. So today is day number 18 in the week number 9. So let's get started. So good morning, first of all, very good morning. And um, today is day number 18, okay, in week number 9. And um, remember what I offer you on Monday, all right? So I tried to get the course the messages of a few students who would like to postpone the collections of the third living contract by one week. But what you see here is I just got three students who support this. So the majority of students do not want to postpone, all right? So let us try to stick to the original schedule. Okay, this is a nice surprise. I have a very hard working class. We want to keep it as it is, right? So we just got three responses. Okay? Okay? This is on everybody's email. This is an announcement. This is on everybody's email. And I announce it in class. Okay? And I asked you to give it give us the response before this first day. And so when I check this. I just got three students who neither support this. So, you want to keep it, right? To submit it next week. Then why don't you respond this? Everybody is just giving me a response. Because as I said, I need, in this class we have 40 students. We need more than 20 to support this. And now we just got three. So, from this, what we can say is, after last class until today, I, I do not know, but uh, try to give this a response, all right? Because I received this request from a few students, and I transferred the message on Monday, and I specifically posed this on Monday, okay? And then I asked you to respond it on before first day. So what do you think? You forgot, or you want to keep it as it is? Because I, as a teacher, I cannot say something which is not supported by all of you. The majority is 37 students in this class do not support it with, with this particular response, okay? So let's, let's forget about this for a minute. And then I just want to let you know, this is how I try to understand you, all right? All right, so let's go back to week number nine. And I hope you understand that sometimes uh, we have all of these announcements, which is announced in class and also sent to your email, we just do not know. <laughs> uh, do you want to? Maybe it's it's important in, in some sense, all right? So this is week number nine, all right? So if you want to keep the proposal, make sure before the end of this class, you have something post on this website. Because I cannot, as I said on Monday, I really cannot do anything if any proposal is not supported by the majority of the class. So what I need to do is announce the results today, all right? So, and then and the, the other things that happen is, today is week number nine. So if you look at the, the course topics, all right? We're going through a lot of the very interesting course topic. But since we are switching into the PBL uh, classroom management mode in this three weeks, this is the second week, and with one more week to go next week, uh, Sometimes we could not lose a lot of the important time here, uh, just going back to describe some of these. But given what's happening in the vicinity around us, particularly Hong Kong, in particular of the, that kind of uh, interesting cyber attack, it would be good for you to really know something about some real story you've never heard about. Okay, let me see if I can show you this as a beginning of today's my. Uh, class, just three minutes. Financial institutions go to great lengths to protect themselves against cyber attacks. But as in live free or die hard, very little stops the elite hackers from penetrating the most sophisticated technology. The hacker underground has developed various weapons in cyberspace that allow them to bypass the encryption and thus get into these systems and steal your funds. And the average losses associated with a cyber heist is 1.3 million. An average bank robbery in the physical world, where you have a gun or a weapon, is only six to eight thousand dollars. 
This is a criminal industry with staggering rewards. In 2005, a Miami-based hacker made crime history by pulling off one of the biggest online bank heists of all time. But he's far less known than the likes of Bonnie and Clyde or Billy the Kid. Hacker Alberto Gonzalez would drive through Miami shopping districts, hacking into stores' wireless networks. He wasn't stealing their money. He was fishing for credit card numbers. And he'd struck the mother load. He broke into a retailer through one of their stores and got back to the corporate headquarters where there was a lot of credit card information all stored in one database in one place. Once Gonzalez had hacked his way into the corporate head office, he would download tens of thousands of customers' credit card details. Gonzalez then sold the stolen credit card details onto Eastern European cyber criminals. In his first year, Gonzalez stole an incredible 11.2 million payment cards from retailers across Miami. Twelve months later, this had increased to almost 90 million. That was hitting very, very large retail chains that have thousands of stores and you know, millions of customers, obviously. Um, so he went after really big targets, and you know, he was successful. Gonzalez got greedy. He decided that it had worked, that he didn't think he had left any tracks. And well, technically, you know, one agent versus one hacker, you're kind of same level. The hacker's probably going to be able to outwit him on anything online. But you bring money into it, and the amount of systems, the amount of agencies, the amount of people who are now focused on you is a problem. In July 2007, the year Live Free or Die Hard was released, Gonzalez was arrested when an undercover detective followed him into a bank. Pretending to use one of the machines, the detective watched as Gonzalez pulled out a number of debit cards and withdrew tens of thousands of dollars in cash. Following months of interrogation, authorities also found he had access to over 43 million stolen credit card numbers. Gonzalez was jailed for 20 years. But why didn't this incredible cyber heist make the headlines? You don't hear about the bank robberies that occur in cyberspace because of the reality of the reputational risk that would impact the financial institution as a whole. Law enforcement, both Europol, the FBI, uh, Secret Service in the U.S., collaborate heavily with the financial institutions to go after cyber criminals. You got the message. What you got towards the end of the story. This is a big crime in a cyberspace. A lot of people are being affected, but did not hear about it in the headline story. Why? A lot of these are being covered up for the fact of the reputations of the financial institutions. Well, a lot of the time it happens like this, uh, particularly in big countries like the United States, where the finance and the economies are taken by those big entities. They have to manipulate in such a way that you do not know much about it, although when you read the story, you get to know it. All right? So this is a very interesting stuff. And then let's see. Okay, this is a very interesting piece too. Just one minute. The head of the City of London Police has said that the UK is losing the battle against cyber criminals. Commissioner Adrian Leppard, addressing MPs earlier this month, said that we are not winning the battle, and that this nature of crime is rising exponentially. In a report by The Telegraph, the Commissioner noted that the UK is being targeted by cyber criminals from 25 different countries, and that businesses in the UK lost around £205 million this year as a result of cybercrime. Among those to be increasingly targeted are wealthy retired people, becoming victims to fraudulent share schemes totaling £3.5 billion a year. On average, victims lost £25,000 each, with half of those losing out in the schemes aged over 65. Mr. Leppard also noted that there was evidence Al-Qaeda and other terrorist networks were using cybercrime as a means of funding their activities. 
The news comes amid fears the resources needed to tackle cybercrime may fall. Leopard warned MPs that with the planned police spending cuts, up to a quarter of the 800 specialist internet crime officers could lose their jobs. If this is one story in a European country, that this particular country is the United Kingdom, England. Okay, they have a lot of challenges to do with this kind of things. And the challenges come because a lot of the people, individuals, fell into the traps of the cyber criminals. They got the money through the kind of uh, fortune. Okay? So it will be very important to arouse your interest and awareness of this. So if you want to know something more about the cybercrime, you come to this essential cybercrime series. Okay? Systematically, you can read five different stories on uh, zombie computers. A lot of these zombie computers are used to attack um, people in different regions of the world. The second one is the virus ID threat. How is your identity being stolen? To do something you're not aware of, but it's going to be a criminal act. The third one is how do you detect insiders' threats? It's very important. So a couple of stories here, just several minutes uh, for each one of this, would be very good for you. Now I'm not going to say anything more than that. I've finished my 20 minutes. Now it's your time to organize yourself. Um, may I just inform you that you can register here by creating a friend that your team would like to share today, then I'm going to give priority to your registrations here, and then before I do the lucky draw, that will be very much time efficient. So if your team would like to share today, earning your class participation score, you can just put a particular thread here, my team, team number one, would like to share today, today's day, then I will give priority to your team, the first come, first serve. And if I do not see any teams here, I'm going to do the lucky draw again, okay? So you have 10 minutes time now to work together. Now it's 10.31. I'm going to stop here exactly at 10.30, all right? So please organize yourself. And in the meantime, if you happen to forgot to sign up here, I'll give you a last chance to sign up here to make sure that make sure we help 40 students in this class and not do anything here. We need more than 20 support, okay? At least 21 support. So. Your, your vote here is very important, all right? So please make sure you can start out working as part of the team by grouping your team members together, all right? members and put them together and start working on the team collaborations wiki and then sign up for today's team-based sharing in the public discussion forum for this week. And remember, when you sign up for your team, the best person to sign up is definitely your coordinator or liaison. And make sure you name your team and sign up for today's day, okay? Today is day number 18 on October the 23rd, 2014, okay? So in about 10 minutes time, I'm going to check this again, and then I'm going to see if you would like to share as a team. Remember, this is the class participation time, and you can earn your class participation score if you're a member of your team during the sharing today. And for those of you who have already shared, not with, make sure you keep a record of your sharing time and the evidence being the, rec the video records that's already posted on the website, all right? The link is already there, the, the important things is over there, all right? You're free to talk and move around during this 10 minutes of working time as a member of the group. So feel free to do so if you have a need to talk to members of the other group too.
answer. So mostly 
the threat learning contract will be extended by one week. So the last day to submit to work for learning contract number three is November 8th, okay? November 8th, one week later than the original day. Um, as I said, if you want to still submit to work on, on November the 1st, you're free to do it, okay? Starting from uh, next Monday to November the 8th, you're free to submit to work during these two weeks, okay? So let's go back to see if uh, any team would like to share. No, that means we need to go through the process. Lucky draw. So but before that, let's go to let's go to the uh, team wiki first. <coughs> Remember, if you sign up for the team-based sharing uh, this week and next week, okay, since we're extended by one more week, so two more weeks ahead, okay? So your whole team will be given priority, and the individual member who come here to do the sharing will be counted, okay? So it's very important that you grab this chance to earn your score. Number six is already on board, so just to save the time, I want to give a chance to the different teams, okay? So um, let me do it this way. Any more team who want to do the sharings today? 
So we have two teams now, team number six and team number seven. Team number one, would you please come down here to pick a tag? If you pre present, then you, you are, you're going to do the presentation. Team number one, any representative today? Team number one, any representative from team number one? Do you want to present? Or you just want to check your luck here? You want to check your luck here? Pick anyone. If you pick one that, is, that has no work for present, that means you don't need to present today. Yes, put it in another table. Team number two. Team number two. Any representative from team number two? Team number two? Yes. Would you please pick one tag here? Yes, please open it up. One. No, okay. Okay, number three. Number three. Any person from team number three? Okay. Please pick one. Nothing. Okay. Team number four. Team number four. Team number four, would you please pick one tag? any tag, there's a 50% chance. Nothing. Ooh. Team number eight. Team number eight. You, you don't put it back, okay? Otherwise, you, you put it in the other table, okay? Terrence. Nothing. Okay, team number nine. There's an equal chance that you will not pick a tech that is called present, but now the chance is higher. Team number nine. Percent. Okay? Put it to the other table. Yeah. Team number ten. One in three chance you need to do it. Okay? You need to grab this chance to earn. Yes, any time. Percent, yes. Okay, that's good. Thank you. So, um, yes, you can go ahead. Now it's team number six sharing with us the work in progress.
development of technology is rapidly developed, um, but there are still some other, other places still have not um, benefits from the development of technologies. Technology. So uh, I'm interested in doing this topic. So uh, I'll pass to my next partner. And, and I also and I also talk about uh, personal proposal and my topic is, is what is information privacy and because it's the first time I'm doing this uh, project so I, I maybe it's not too uh, suitable and this is my partner Vivian's uh, proposal and it's the uh, ethics and social responsibility in the information age. And I care. And about the information for and past to I'm Lisa and I'm responsibility for the construction of the beach because it's so hard to use. And here's my individual And also, I think I made some mistake of my individual proposal, but it's okay. And my topic. I think I made some mistake again because I forgot. I forgot to copy the topic I chose in, my, in this page. And but yes, but the topic is from side wide. And I will introduce our PM proposal and our topic is the ethical issues of hacking and fracking. So, um, so uh, I will use some example to illustrate what is like a hacker hacked into a company's system to reveal its information and the premise is that uh, the company is a bad company so for those people who are uh, suffering from the company and they will think that the hacking is ethical since they help them to uh, like reveal, revealing, revealing the, the information of the company and which helps them and for the company of course it is the uh, the hacking is um, is unethical so um, here is the controversial point like hacking itself is already a crime so uh, uh, to determine if it is ethical or unethical um, like uh, different if you are standing in different point you have uh, different opinions to judge if it is ethical. So um, uh, this is an interesting topic, and we would like to um, do it as our uh, proposal. So Elisa will uh, uh, Elisa will talk about the meeting. Yeah, our first meeting is on October uh, 15, and during the meeting we we just need to. We just decide which, we just to choose which side we have chose for our past proposal. It's because we are we did not know much about the side before. And the last meeting we decided which one should be should be on. We decide the role of each one. And our, our, our past proposal is based on the side of three, side of four, and south. It's based on the side of one, side of two, and side of five. So we will choose side of three, side of four, and side of six for our next uh, agriculture free proposal. And also we we have to take we have decided the date of our next meeting. And this is our team program.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to your next sharing. This is team number six. Now, may I invite team number seven to get ready? Thank you very much. focus um, in this report we focus in computer crime and how to prevention uh, in we uh, promotion 
privacy and privacy and identity files is also about the information bestower. So there are about 20 pieces of common uh, computer crime. So for example, computer secret cache, selling computer for also data and so on. And prevention method is we can use law to cut and furnish the crime motive. For example, security to protect in self-information resources use ISO 27001 and the use of safety science and technology such as the use of firewalls and anti force software and so on. So uh, we need to know the uh, computer crime uh, computer crime services and how to prevention. That's all. Okay. And later we will make our business meeting. As we have finished our business meeting, and we will make a f our work document of it, and we will post our proposal on our wiki. Yes. Thank you very much, team number eight. Uh, team number seven. Yes, team number seven. Thank you. Now let's give the turn to team number nine. Are you ready, team number nine? Now team number nine is not ready yet, so. Now remember, when you give up your chance to earn your score, that is your chance, your decisions, okay? Team number 10. <coughs> Team number 10, are you ready? No? Okay. Now, if the both of team give up your chance. Now, any other team would like to share today? Even though it's not your pick? <coughs> All right. Remember, this is the very precious chance. We don't have a not this kind of chance to earn your in-class participation score. And uh, it is highly recommended that you do not give it up. But in case you're really not ready, you better work out soon. Because now that you have two and a half weeks more to do that, OK? So allow me to take attendance for today's first, and then we'll come back to some of the issues. But first of all, it's your 15 or 20 minutes now to work as part of the team, to continue with your teamwork, just to get ready for next week's classroom participations. You just need to get yourself organized and report to the whole class what your team has been doing. And that is very simple for you to earn your score. These scores to make up 20% of your final grade. And if you give it up, it's very hard for you to earn it back like that, okay? So do not give it up, but it's your chance. Kalia, okay, Crolia, Ada, thank you. Andy, thank you. Ryan Wong, thank you. Jenny Yu, thank you. Um, Jackie Wong, thank you. White Mom, thank you. And then it's uh, Sea Hall, thank you. Um, Phone, not here, okay. Bitrets, thank you. Fish, thank you. Angela, thank you. Eureka, thank you. Vivian, perhaps it's today. Ruby, Ruby, thank you. Uh, C, thank you. Elisa, thank you. Uh, Lockdown, thank you. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Terrence, thank you. Winnie Hood, thank you. Tom, thank you. Alright. So, Dixon, thank you. Winnie Ho, thank you. Gideon, thank you. Fred, thank you. Michelle,
it's your time and another 10 to 15 minutes to organize yourself for the next class participation speaking. It is very precious that we work together, okay? Basically, when you're here as a team, you just need to give the whole class some basic understanding of what you have been doing with some illustrations on the wiki. So basically, it's very easy for you to use this 10 minutes time to earn your class participation score. If I were you, as many times as possible, I would never give it up, okay? You just need to give yourself some time to organize yourself, what you're going to tell the whole class about what. Okay, and each person in your team be responsible for a small part of this. So that way, 20% is already in your hand. Okay, you have two and a half more weeks to do it. All right, until we finish this third learning contract, and then we we'll return to the learning portfolio so the individual could do the sharing, him or herself. I would like to see you working on your wikis now. Make sure you work out something very specific. Now, I receive questions, very constructive questions. Suppose we've already selected our two silos and we've already worked out a specific proposal. What are we going to do next? Okay? What you have to go in, what you are going to do next is to make sure you construct on your team wiki enough evidence that all the members in your team have worked together to fulfill the requirements of the two silos with the specific modifications in your chosen proposal to expand into two specific tasks. How are we going to accomplish silo one? How are we going to accomplish silo two? With individual pairs who have chosen what topics? Okay, we have already done something specific examples, proof of your work, and you need to organize your work first in your wiki and select enough of your wiki's material into your report. And that is very important. And in the process of doing it, use the team discussion forum to keep enough record of your discussion detail to earn your score. The journal is not a big problem now. The discussions record in that case is not a big problem. The report is, again, your four persons writing the report and then your personal blog Remember, when you are going to earn the score in this learning contract and also in the last two learning contract, it is an individual who selects the material to submit, okay, based on the collective work done. So you have to budget on your own what I'm going to submit, and the whole team need to budget on your own what you are going to show in the team wiki, because evidence of discussions in the team discussion forum and evidence of work in the team wiki are extremely important to earn the score in this learning contract. And you must leave evidence of yourself regulated your learning. Your timelines, your meetings minute, and details expressed in your meeting minutes of how you're going to allocate the jobs to be worked out by individual member, by individual pair, and by the whole team. And the artifacts produced in your team wiki by who, by which pair, by the whole team. All of these are very important. And as our requires of you, have you managed to review the work in progress? Have you managed to revise the work plan? Have you managed to work within the number of hours for this learning contract? The total number of hours expect per person 
in the original three weeks work is 18 hours. Normally, 20. That's good enough. Now it is four weeks, so you have 24 hours as the basis to work out 18 hours work. So you have to learn how to make the best use of these hours, okay, per person. And then as a four um, persons, man hours team in four weeks. These are very important. And how much of the critical thinking have you done in terms of sorting out the proposals? in terms of thinking out what examples to produce, and in terms of who's going to keep the records of these. So each person beside your administrative role as the coordinator, as the secretary, as the liaison, as the project tracker, as the reporter, as a minute taker, you also need to get involved with doing the OIA, okay, doing the discussions on the topic, and thinking through whether or not the evidence are good enough to support your work in this final learning contract. Okay, after this learning contract, as I mentioned on Monday, your basic training in this course will be over. And then you have to put your attention to building up your learning portfolio. Uh, in building up your learning portfolio, you have four weeks time to do it. And basically, we will invite you to go back and look at the silos you are interested in and select four silos. And for each silo, you need to decide what artifacts to submit to demonstrate that you, as an individual student in this class, have encompassed expected silos of this course. And then you need to select the artifacts based on your work in the first learning contract, based on your work in the second learning contract, and based on the work in the third learning contract, and modify a little bit of this. And then for each silo you select, you need to submit a bunch of artifacts. Okay? So it will be very interesting that you always have to come back to see what you've done, what you've learned, and you have to decide what to submit. You have 10 more minutes to work as a member of the team now, and I'm going to keep silent. And of course, if you have a question, just raise your hand, I'll come to you, okay? This is a very precious time to work together in crafts.
Okay, any other questions? I've received a lot of good questions already. Make sure you, you have to uh, check how much time you have, individual commitment, and the way to produce something collectively, and the way you have to produce something individually, and also My recommendations to all of you is you must check my weekly message very carefully. Every week, the weekly teacher's message is a very important reminder of what you need to do, okay? And for this particular course, if you need some conference story to support the writing of the report, let me remind you, do not neglect, okay, your day 15. There's a lot of very good story here. And also, in day 15, you will see that I have included a software here called, called the Temptation Studio Number 8, which you can download from the site and use it free for 30 days. Most students who use this software to record whatever happening in your computer screen as well as from the input voice channel. So you can use that to record the warning of your PowerPoint and the reading of your presentations. Remember, your presentation should not exceed 15 minutes, okay? Because 15 minutes will give me around 180 megabytes of storage and in the Buddha environment, you cannot upload a file larger than 200. So as I said, 15 minutes, about 150, 180 megabytes will be good enough. So try this software, install it in your notebook or home PC, and that will help you to produce your digital story. Okay? Very convenient. That's it for today. If you do not have any other questions, you're free to go to the next class. And uh, make sure when you are back next Monday, get ready for your team-based sharing to earn your class participation score. But that's it for this episode of CISG 1.3, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy, on October the 23rd, 2014. Until next Monday, stay tuned.